Hi doctor, I'm looking at this case and we have a very deep bite to treat. And then the question first becomes, do we intrude the upper teeth or the lower teeth or both? So I always look at the molar position just to get an establishment of where we are. So class one on one side, a little bit class two on the other side. So we should have plenty of room to correct this deep bite and maybe not even need to use some IPR. Looking at his smile line, we can't see a lot from this photo, but it looks like his upper teeth are set within his smile in a relatively good position. Looking at the curve of speed, the upper uh, anterior, especially the uh, centrals, and the laterals should intrude some because part of the wear on the canines, most likely, um, is that they aren't uh, in a good canine guidance, and he actually risks uh, damaging the lower anterior more um, if we can't get the canines to be the primary guiding teeth rather than the crowns. Um, so the upper anterior needs to intrude, the lower does as well, and so there's initially some attachments that I'm going to add and change to make this predictable. Um, first, we want to have as much retention as possible. So uh, we ideally, if one is good, like this deep bite attachment counts as retention, then two is better. But if we can do even more retention because of how much intrusion needs to happen, um, that is going to make this more predictable. So looking at the scan here, we can bond to PFM crowns as I am going to put retention attachments on the upper laterals. Those are absolutely needed if we want to uh, predictably intrude the centrals at all. And then I would extend retention attachments to the molars. These have crowns and we can bond to crowns, but we can most more easily bond to, uh, to enamel. So I'm gonna add those to the molars. Um, I'm then going to prioritize retention attachments instead of these rotation attachments because these rotation attachments don't work very well to uh, have the aligner grip. And when the aligner grips onto the arch, uh, then the intrusion movements are far more predictable as the aligner just wrapping around the teeth isn't enough to put orthodontic force against the teeth to get them to predictably move, especially in the way that is the most resistant, which is intrusion. So we can ask this of the CAD designers, but I will just go ahead and use the 3D controls. My favorite retention attachment, which is taught to me by my mentor, Dr. Galler, is the horizontal beveled to the occlusal attachment. Um, because we're putting, I'm putting these on molars, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make them bigger. Uh, I then want to add, uh, change these to retention attachments, so I can right click and change that. But what that does is it doesn't get rid of the rotation movement that gets planned in, even if we do the live update. So I'm gonna click here, I'm gonna press zero and enter to eliminate those types of movement. So just changing those directions of movement didn't really change the overjet or the overall case very much. And for an adult patient, doing those relatively small uh, rotation movements really isn't that beneficial to the case. And I see this a lot with the Invisalign software. And because this isn't a recommendation, this is the output of a software program showing you all the things that are possible, not necessarily all the things that we want to do. So I'm gonna take this away and I'm gonna especially, oops, let me press zero, enter. And then I'm also gonna take this crown root angulation movement away. This is very difficult to do and not going to be beneficial to really solving this uh, person's issue, which is overly heavy anterior occlusion. And this is a perfect example of a traumatic malocclusion. Um, so just with that, uh, we can then right click, oops, I need to have these features on, right click and then change to retention. This change to retention and then upper arch as well. And this optimized expansion support, because it has a long horizontal surface, that can work as a retention attachment. I then want retention on the upper laterals, retention on the upper laterals. And another thing we can do is we can add the same attachments to the lower laterals. So I will pause the video, show the live update, 
um, and then we'll press rev update and then we can see what the what these attachments will all look like. This is what it looks like after modifying that with the 3D controls. Um, so just doing this for a deep bite is going to significantly improve the predictability. Now the other things that I would do is I would do a careful look at why this root control attachment is on this tooth as well as the other canines. So the, that attachment gets triggered whenever the crown root angulation gets planned into the case. And that's a difficult movement to do. I had already removed it from this premolar. And let's take a closer look at how what that movement is and if we want to keep it. So again, just changing to those retention attachments and removing the uh, rotations, that is, that's key. And then anything else, if you just did that, you're gonna have a much better outcome um, and much more predictable. Now I can click on this tooth and see all the types of movements that are being planned in. So this is the crown root angulation. Really not a needed movement for most of our adult cases and is very difficult to do on these long rooted canines. So I have that removed, but then ah, this makes sense why there's so much intrusion here because this canine is being extruded. We certainly don't need that movement at all for a deep bite case. If anything, we want to intrude these teeth further. And if we want the case to look like this clinically, uh, then I would highly recommend doing a little bit more intrusion because especially the upper central incisors, those will be resistant of extruding, or sorry, intruding as much as we see on the clincheck um, because the clincheck is not a actually not a model of how the teeth are going to finish. It is a model of how the aligners are going to be made to push the teeth. Um, so let me just check all these canines and I would just say press zero and enter on all of those angulation movements. Now I can do less intrusion on the premolar and then I've taken away that uh, blue dot or more difficult movement. Um, and then last but not least, let's see, if this tooth is rotating, uh, we would then need to change this to a rotation attachment. But looking at the case and looking at his photos and where the tooth is starting, let's just take a look. What would it look like if we did no rotation? It's up to you. I think it looks, I think it still looks like it's in a good arch form. So I'm going to go that way and just not do any attachment at all. And that's the analysis that I would do with the rest of the canines. And then we are ready to go. You could eliminate the IPR. I don't mind it still here because it can create, uh, create a longer contact point for these triangularly shaped teeth. And having this amount of overjet at the finish is exactly what you would want to see with a deep bite case so that you can make sure that you don't finish with an anterior interference from the intrusion not clinically happening as much as you see on the ClinCheck. Um, so those are my key points and let me know if you have any other questions.